Lab Guy here. Happy New Year. This year, 2019, should be an exciting year at Lab Guy's world. I have several projects in the queue coming off of my bucket list, which is longer than the remainder of my life. So to start with, in the middle of last year I purchased a new 3D printer. It's the Robox CEL with the single extruder and this has helped with uh, a project I've wanted to work on for a long time called The Chief. The Chief is a video test pattern generator based on the 2F21 monoscope tube made by RCA originally in 1939. Uh, people in my age group can remember seeing the test pattern after 11 o'clock at night when most of the old TV stations would sign off and then put up a test pattern which was there as a courtesy for television repairmen to come back to the shop and use it to align television sets. Those are what we call the good old days. So let's uh, first take a look at the Robox CEL printer. Just a quick look. The Robox printer is having a day off right now. I have kept it busy for several months printing out all manner of plastic bits and bobs uh, as I learned to use the 3D designing software. Of course, uh, when you start out doing that, you will make plenty of mistakes. I'll spare you, but I have a large box full of rejected parts that are the wrong dimensions, the holes are in the wrong place, or other various little flaws that made the part unusable. But that's the cost of education at Lab Guy's World. The C Robox CEL printer is not very large. It has a small printing area uh, as these things go. But what was good about this printer compared to the El Cheapo $200 Chinese printer I bought is that this one actually works. The previously mentioned printer did not work ever, not once. Could not even power up. The motors were running in the wrong directions at the wrong speeds and it got stupid real fast when you turned it on. No amount of troubleshooting was able to uh, isolate anything. I believe the entire controller was funky and, well, you only put so much effort into something like that before you just throw it away. So, let's see what a person can create with their 3D printer. Allow me to introduce you to the Chief. It's a bit odd in the mechanical sense. It's not one of my regular flat breadboard style designs or just a big metal box design. This one's fancier thanks to the 3D printer. So let's see some of the innovations. The Monoscope tube is housed inside of a Faraday shield made of copper clad circuit board that has been wrapped around a form and soldered at the seams to form a box that can block radio waves. The monoscope tube is essentially a television camera tube and it is sensitive to interference from sources such as fluorescent lights, LED light controllers and AM radio stations. So to keep those signals from getting into the amplifier chain, the tube is wrapped in a metal jacket. So the first part of course is easy serviceability. I have two monoscope tubes. The 2F21 with the Indian head test pattern, which is the source of the name of this project, the Chief. This is to show my respect for the Native Americans and the connection of this tube to American history because th despite anyone's arguments this is an American device and I will approach it in that sense. 
So first let's see how we get to our tube if we wanted to change it. The first thing that happens is this cover is removable. It's held on with four screws, has a BNC jack dead in the center. I put some cutouts in there to save plastic and of course I didn't want it to be ugly so I put the name of the project in there and I have to admit this came out very well. The Chief. The center pin of the of the uh, connector will eventually have a better spring. This one's not very good. Uh, that contacts a contact in the front of the tube. You'll see that in a moment. So this is the top cover. It consists of two pieces of printed plastic joined. That's uh, due to a limitation in the size of things I can print with this printer. It's held on with four screws, copper copper clad circuit board for the shield, and a sheet of clear transparency printer film containing the lettering. The next step to changing the tube is to remove the Faraday shield. Nothing up my sleeve. Within the copper shield is the support frame or what I call the support stack as it's made of four distinct plastic rings each printed in two halves and put together in a manner similar to what I just showed you. The first ring which is actually made of three parts has the two outer halves it has a fair amount of thickness for strength and a recessed pocket that the neck of the tube sits down into. Beneath it is a 3D printed tube socket of my own design. I'll get to that later when we get to the functional troubleshooting of the project. The electronics are currently under construction and debug and as usual, the horizontal scan circuit is giving me cramps. Moving right along. The second ring up, I see I've made a boo-boo. Let me fix that. The second ring supports the deflection yoke. It's also made of two halves and has some small lockdown clamps to hold the yoke in place. The third ring up contains a metal contact that connects to a contact on the side of the tube which is called the collector ring. It provides the support and the electrical connection for that. The upper assembly contains the uh, support for the tube and it actually supports the tube bell so that the tube is not standing on its neck it's essentially suspended from the top ring to just before the Bakelite base bottoms out in the socket. This keeps all the stress off of the glass of the tube. The neck doesn't have to hold up the, the mass of the upper bulb. So this is essentially the mechanical detail of the chief. I've been working on this project for about three months now and the deflection electronics are giving me a hard time as usual. Vertical is not so bad however in this case the vertical circuit did suffer a component failure one of the transistors burned out. It should not have I wasn't pushing it or anything but it, it failed it may have been a bad part. The horizontal circuit being of a somewhat resonant or at least tuned nature is giving me cramps. I've battled this my whole life. Even when I copy a horizontal scan circuit just because of differences in parasitic capacitance, lead lengths, layout is very critical in these. 
uh, my circuits don't work. Many times they simply go up in smoke. But we won't worry about that for now. So far I still have to just physically assemble this whole unit. And it's uh, come a long ways. The tube is in its supports and mounted to the aluminum chassis which should be more than large enough to contain all of the necessary electronics. Currently there is very little in there uh, but the AC entry module and the DC power supply unit. So this is the current state of the Chief. Hopefully in the weeks to come we'll have something that's operating that I can demonstrate. Lab Guy out.